if you are in a financial distress the only thing that your body will tell you your eyes can read will be the financial distress so you can only look at your account and be looking at it and what you will see there will be your statement your balance will be there there's nothing nothing else that these eyes can see if a man is crippled if he looks with his eyes all he will see will be withered legs come on amen that's all he will see if a man is sick if you look with his eyes all you will see and feel will be the symptoms but that's not all there is that's not all there is that is why the third vision is so vital the third vision is the vision of the mind the vision of the mind and you, you need to understand every time God speaks to you this is what he is trying to bring to you he brings his word that he may help create change improve the visions of your mind that's why God's word comes the word of God comes to change the visions of your mind to improve the visions of your mind to enhance the visions of your mind because your everyday living comes from the vision of your mind look at what the scripture says the Bible says as a man think it in his heart he says so is he as a man think it in his heart that means the attitude of your mind or the working processes of your mind will determine the quality of your life it will determine the quality of your life if you read in 3rd John chapter 1 verse 2 he says beloved I wish above all things that you prosper that you be in health even as your soul prosper it your soul prosper it and the prosperity of your soul your soul is that part that contains your mind even as your soul prosper it you know so how did Abraham see the whole world his imagination that's how he saw the whole world his imagination and now you have a responsibility to help your vision this is not what God will do for you this is what you would do for yourself now uh, listen for example God says to you um, I have given you the nations of the world say you have you have it I've given you the nations of the world or God says something as little as um, I have given you a new house I've given you a new car I've given you whatever it is any material thing maybe you're a student and the Spirit of God says to you you're gonna graduate from the university with with first class you're gonna have it now it's not enough that you heard God it's not even enough that God spoke to you it's not enough when God speaks to you first his word comes to you as a seed it comes to you as a seed the seed of God's word must then implant it must then implant in your spirit then it must grow the implantation of the Word of God in your heart and the growth of the Word of God in your heart is your responsibility it's your responsibility look at what the psalmist said the psalmist said thy word have I heed in my heart your word have I implanted in my heart you know your word have I implanted in my heart then he says that I may not sin against you now I don't want you to look at the word sin from a traditional standpoint the word sin is not a religious word the word sin as I n, is actually a word used in a game called archery come on amen it's a word used in a game called archery archery and the word sin means literally to miss the mark it means to miss the mark that means when you aim at a mark and you pull that that arrow and you shoot you're supposed to go for the bull's eye when you miss the mark they say that's sin that's sin what's righteousness righteousness is a legal expression what it means it means being aligned with the will and the purposes of God 
that is being aligned with rightness being accurate you know being in sync with accuracy that means righteousness is the opposite of sin sin is missing the mark righteousness is an alignment with the word an alignment with the commandment now David said he says your word have I heed in my heart I've implanted your word in my spirit that I may not miss the mark come on praise God that means your word will keep me in your path your word will keep me in the path of accuracy God's word will keep me in the path of accuracy if that word is embedded in my spirit it will do something so the question now will be how do you embed God's word meditation David showed us meditation you know meditation meditation that is how you do it when you meditate on God's word meditation is conscious imagination you know because when you are meditating you are consciously setting your mind on the word for creation you are consciously setting your mind on the word for creation you are using your mind to create you're using your mind to build this time not physical structures but mental structures mental structures mental structures so when God speaks to you that's just the beginning when the word implants you have now a responsibility to begin to create with that word create with that word and how do you create with the word visualization imagination meditation so you use the word of God and begin to create and form